Hello, this is Dr. Boyson's Reality Check. We are still handling the topic occupational health and safety. We are on the section for topic four under race control. Please remember to subscribe to my channel at Dr. Boyson's Reality Check and don't forget to click on the notification bell so that we can send you notification when we load new videos. So the topic today is race controls. In topic three, we dealt with risk assessment process and we looked at the five stages in risk assessment. We discussed step one, which is identify the risk. Step two, assess the risk under risk assessment process. In risk controls, we'll be discussing the third, the fourth, and the fifth steps. So the third step is to evaluate the existing control. The fourth is to implement additional risks. And the fifth one is to monitor and review. So under the third step, that is evaluate existing, existing controls, what we are saying here is that the controls that we have put in place, the existing one, we need to assess them, we need to evaluate them. We need to make sure that those controls are effective. If they are not effective, then we would implement the fourth one, which is to implement additional, uh, uh, implement additional controls. So essentially, in evaluating the existing controls, we determine what has been done. We measure the risks that we have in place, whether the controls will be able to deal with those risks. And if there have been risks or hazard which has occurred, and these controls have been effective. If they have not been effective, we change them. So we are saying that risk control measures include eliminate, eliminating the risks, substituting more harmful uh, hazards, and taking precautionary measures uh, such as training and etc. The risk control measures are usually recorded in the risk evaluation table in relation to the hazard identification or the risk. And the risk evaluation table serves as a reference point when subsequent hazard risks are identified in the future. It also aids to know whether the existing controls were effective or not, and if there is an additional thing that has to be done to prevent or minimize these risks. And this allows for the determination of additional risk control when necessary. So when we have done that evaluation and we think that everything is okay, then we don't, we don't need to um, implement an additional what risk controls. But if there are gaps, then the fourth step comes in. Then we, what we have to do is that having identified the hazard in your workplace, assess their risks and review the existing controls, all hazards must be managed before people are hurt or become ill. And we are saying that the management of risks in the workplace requires eliminating risks so far as reasonably practicable in the first instance. When elimination is not possible, then risks should be minimized so far as reasonable, practicable. All hazard must have been assessed should, so that we will be able to deal with it in order of priority. The most effective control option should be selected and eliminated uh, or minimized. Where existing controls are not very effective, it is important to ask, reassess the risks and employ more effective measures to reduce the risks as much as possible. The hierarchy of control runs from control option from the highest to the lowest. And this is an ex a clear cut example of the high hierarchy of control. So here at the apex, at the top, we are talking about elimination and substitution, okay? And we are saying that this is more effective. You just eliminate the risks or you substitute it with something else. When we come to <coughs> this middle bit, we look at I mean, physical change to workplace and it talks about engineering controls. It might be the layout of the place and we have to fix in these engineering controls and these are more and uh, less effective in that order. Then we come to the administrative controls where it, re it involves the institution of policies and procedures that will help people adjust to their work, work rotation and all that. And the last one is the, the, the personal protective I mean, equipment, which is the least effective one. So to talk about the first one, we are saying that to eliminate hazard, for example, you may want to remove a noisy machine from a quiet area. 
you may want to dispose of unwanted chemical or repair damage equipment promptly or remove a trip hazard from a clouded corridor. Substituting or modifying a rig, for example, you might want to substitute an old method or machine for a new or an advanced one. You might want to replace a noisy machine with a, a less noisy one or substitute a hazardous chemical with a less dangerous one. Then it means that you, are, you want to deal with the, the rigs. Now the engineering, which is less small, less effective, we are saying that the engineering is the basic concept behind, behind all engineering control. The concept is the basic thing behind all engineering control and is that, that the work environment and the job itself should be designed to reduce exposure to hazard and minimize risk as far as reasonably practicable. And engineering controls are the first in line of defense against injury and illness because they have the high potential of minimizing risks and do not rely on human behavior to be effective. So for instance, if, instead of asking employees to wear respiratory protection, which must be monitored instead uh, and managed, it, is, it might be more effective to install ventilation system that does not require any of these human effort to be effective. So instead of asking workers to wear PPEs to prevent something, you put in an engineering something like installing ventilation systems that will avert or minimize that. So modifying existing machine or purchasing new ones might be a, a, an engineering intervention to mitigate water risks. And then we have the administrative one that deals primarily with work procedures and methods changing um, um, and schedules and changing tax loads and all that training and supervision with a goal of reducing the duration. So we are saying administrative controls are changes in work procedures such as written safety policies, rules and supervision and training with a goal of reducing the duration, frequency and severity of the exposure to hazard chemicals or situation. And administrative controls uh, is normally used in conjunction with other controls that are more directly uh, effective to prevent or to control exposure to hazard. The last one is the personal protective equipment. And this is an example of someone who is wearing a, a helmet with what and a nose, I mean, gear or a, a nose protector just to prevent the person to be exposed to maybe chemical or something. And then the, the helmet being, uh, protecting the person from, I mean, being hit with something from, from the top. So an example is special clothing, eye protection, hear, hearing protection, respiratory protection, and head protection. So we are saying that PPE is a method that prevents a worker from being directly exposed to hazard by something the worker wears, okay? So PPE is considered the method of the last resort because PPE does not reduce or eliminate the hazard. If the PPE fails, immediate exposure is the result. So examples of PPE include, that's what we have said, special clothing like clothes, aprons, overalls, eye protection lights sunglasses, safety glasses of face shield, and we have head protection like helmet, cap, and hat, and hearing protection like headset, and protecting feet safety boots and socks, and respiratory protection, which is also a form of PPE. The last one is having done, the last step is having done all this, then you come to the monitoring and control. So in the monitoring and control, we check as expectation against actual breaks that has happened. If there are deviations and these deviations are negative, then it means that there is more of the interventions that we have to implement. For instance, if we put in a strategy or a measure to reduce the occurrence of an accident and this ha accident happens, then the monitoring and evaluation or the review will just see that there has been a gap, that the measure that was put in was not enough to mitigate the risk. So additional measure will be implemented. So we are saying that uh, provide additional supervision when new employees with limited skills, levels, or knowledge 
are introduced to the workplace, the effectiveness of control measure can be checked through regular reviews as well as cons um, consultation with workers. And monitoring records of risk management process assist with undertaking subsequent review or risk assessment as it demonstrates decision-making processes and informs how controls were intended to be implemented and how effective existing controls have been so that additional measures could be implemented when necessary. Regs assessment you no, know, is an ongoing process. Therefore, regular reviews and effective, effectiveness of hazard assessment and control measures must be instituted so that regs assessment would be conducted any time there is what a change to the workplace so that these changes will be effected to ensure that the regs do not occur. If there is a change, if the change, the change will be an engineering one, then we institute that one. If it is, it is a replacement of something or a substitution to eliminate the regs entirely, we do that. But all these things comes with cost and other things. So sometimes there is always a balance between engineering and the balance between the, the administrative and then the wear of the use of PPEs. Most organizations resort to use the last resort PPEs when they are aware that these hazards are there. It's important that organization will work out to institute elimination of wrecks rather than using engineering techniques to mitigate the wrecks rather than exposing the worker to the risks and asking the worker to wear the PPEs. Thank you for your time. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel at Dr. Uh, Boyson's Reality Check and then click on the notification so that we can send you videos as we load on YouTube. Thank you for your time and see you in the next lecture.